Hey everyone, my name is Tim and today I want to show you what the back forward cache or BF cache is, how to see the potential impact that it could have on your site, and how to make sure that your pages are eligible to use it. When a user first navigates to a page, the browser has to do a lot of work to get that page to be displayed. It has to download all the different requests over the network. It has to do style calculation, layout, rendering, parse, compile, and execute JavaScript. It's expensive work. Chrome's usage data shows that roughly 10% of all desktop navigations and 20% of all mobile navigations are either back or forward. Someone hitting the back button or forward button, stuff like that. So it makes sense to try to avoid doing all of that work every single time. To help with this, browsers maintain a back forward cache. Basically, when the user navigates to a new page, the browser keeps a version of the fully rendered page in memory, and they try to use that whenever a back or forward navigation is triggered. If the page is BF cache eligible, they're able to very quickly display the previous page. But they can't use this every time. If a site uses an unload event handler, at least in Chrome, Edge, and Firefox, or the page has a cache control no store header, for example, the page becomes ineligible for BF cache, and it must be re-rendered and, potentially, all of the resources have to be requested again. Now, doing no work is going to be much cheaper and faster than doing work that we've already done before, so obviously we want to take advantage of BF cache whenever possible. Now we can get a good idea of how often our pages are BF cache eligible and what the potential impact is of optimizing for BF cache by looking at our RUM data. So here I've pulled up the RUM compare feature in Speed Curve, which lets me compare two different cohorts or groups of data. On the left, I have the past two weeks of data at the 75th percentile, and I'm using a page attribute to tell me when that page was restored from back forward cache. On the right, I have the exact same grouping, except now I'm checking to see when that page attribute is false, when we potentially could have used back forward cache, but the page wasn't able to be pulled from the cache for some reason. As we can see, there's a significant opportunity in terms of performance. Because the page is coming from in memory, the largest contentful paint uh, when back forward cache is used is zero seconds, compared to 1.46 seconds uh, when we are on unable to use the back forward cache. And if we go down to our sample size, we will see that Right now, we're not back forward cache eligible very often. We have 1,900 page views over the last two weeks where we were able to use the back forward cache, and we have over 70,000 where for some reason the browser wasn't able to do that. Now, if we go down even further, we can start to get a little bit of a breakdown here in terms of which page views uh, we're not successfully getting restored from back forward cache. And so we see a few dashboards in this case. So our next step is to identify why are those pages not eligible for back forward cache? To do that, we can look at our synthetic data. Uh, so I've pulled up a test for one of our dashboards, and we run Lighthouse on each of these different tests. And under the performance score, I can see that the page was preventing back forward cache restoration. Uh, so to see that, I'm going to click through to the full Lighthouse report and scroll down, and I'm going to get a little bit more information about what those reasons were. And in this case, it is the fact that the page, uh, the main resource of the page itself is using cache control no store. So if we want to fix anything here, and we, may, we would need to remove that header. Now in our case, it actually doesn't make sense to remove this header because we don't want to risk exposing potential user information. And that's something that you're going to have to assess with your own site and your own pages. But hopefully you can see here how the combination of RUM and synthetic data can help us very quickly identify what the potential impact is of BF cache and what exactly we need to do to make sure that more of our pages are eligible to use this powerful performance optimization.